Okay. Hi, I'm astronaut Alvin Drew aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery. I'd like to read you a bedtime story. This one is called Max Goes to the Moon by Jeffrey Bennett, illustrated by Alan Okamoto. This is a story of how Max the dog helped return people to the moon, this time to stay. It all began the morning of the parade. Max had just returned from his trip to the space station. He was a hero. After all, none of the astronauts could have come home safely without him. As Max's car drove down Pearl Street, Max looked to the west and began to howl just as the moon set over the mountains. In truth, Max howled because he heard a siren. He always howls at sirens, but the TV reporters didn't know that, so they thought he was howling at the moon. The reporter spotted Max's friend Tori. Why did Max howl at the moon, he asked. I'm not sure, said Tori. Maybe it's because he wants to go there. Well, Tori, maybe it's good enough for TV, but the, by the next day, well, well, Tori's, well, Tori's maybe was good enough for TV, but by the next day, Max's dream of going to the moon was all over the news. And just because no one had been to the moon in a long time, it seemed like it was about time for someone or some dog to go. It's not easy to go to the moon. It takes, a big, it takes big rocket engines to get the spaceship off the Earth. It takes careful planning to make sure the astronauts reach the moon and come back safely. And it costs lots of money. But everywhere Max went, crowds chanted, Send Max to the moon! People wrote letters to the president, so a new moon ship was built and assembled at the space station. Tori gave Max the good news. You're going to the moon, she said. I sure hope they let me come with you. Max went into astronaut training again. The other astronauts were glad to have Max back. Max made the long training sessions seem fun. Somehow he always managed to find a stick. He loved to play fetch while the astronauts trained in the water tank. He also loved to play tug of war. And guess who always won? Tori thought that Max should know a little history before his trip, so he told Max about the first astronauts who went to the moon. Listen carefully, Max. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin were the first people to walk on the moon. Their mission was called Apollo 11. They landed on the moon on July 20th, 1969. Neil Armstrong stepped out first. Do you know what he said when he took his first step on the moon? Armstrong said, that's one small step for a man one giant leap for mankind. Do you understand, Max? Max barked, and Tori took that as a yes. Good boy, Max, said Tori. NASA chose six experienced astronauts to go to the moon with Max. Since Max and Tori made such a good team, Tori got to go along too. So the crew of seven humans and one dog blasted off into space. Within a few hours, they were docked at the space station where their moon ship was waiting. After lunch on the space station, the crew boarded the moon ship. The crew fired the moonship's rocket engines and to gain speed, leaving Earth orbit. Once they were on their way, they turned off the engines and coasted toward the moon. The trip took a little more than two days. Soon the moon loomed large in the window, with the Earth far behind. The crew turned the ship around, firing the rocket engines, slowed it down. As the moonship neared the surface, the blast from its engines kicked up a cloud of moon dust. Then it settled gently to the moon. Max was so excited about getting to the moon that the crew had a hard time getting his spacesuit on. It took three of them just to hold Max while the others pulled the spacesuit over his legs. Tori made sure that Max's tail went in the right place. Then they closed all the buckles and attached his helmet. Finally, they checked to make sure that his spacesuit was airtight. This sounds like my spacewalk a couple of days ago, except I don't have a tail. When they opened the airlock, Max jumped right out. You should have seen the look on his face. He went much higher and farther than he ever expected. It also took him much longer to come down than he was used to on Earth. Tori watched him out the window and said, That's one giant leap for a dog. For posterity, the astronauts fenced off, fenced off the spot where Max made his first paw prints on the moon. There was no wind or rain on the moon, so those paw prints are still there today, even though it's been many years since Max's first moon trip. Max thought it would be fun to play with a big stick. He didn't see any, so he decided to look behind a big rock. When he poked his head into the rock shadow, he couldn't see a thing. It was darker than the darkest night, and cold, too. Max leaped back with a look of surprise and worry. Tori bounded over to calm him down. It's okay, Max. You're a good dog. Just try and stay out of the shadows. Anyway, you won't find any sticks on the moon. Nothing lives here, so there aren't any trees. Here, I brought you a frisbee to play with. Tori got off a good throw, and even though her big spacesuit glove made it a little hard to hold the frisbee, Max bounded after it. 
It didn't curve the way Max expected it, expected, and he missed it by a lot. Tori quickly realized why, and Max was confused. He didn't know that objects move di differently when there's no air. Tori picked up the rock, picked up a rock, and pulled a feather out of her pack. Look at this feather, she explained to Max. On Earth, the air would make it float gently to the ground, but there's no air here on the moon, so it falls just like the rock. Tori picked up the frisbee and threw it again. This time, Max knew what to do. She threw it very high, so Max had time to get under it. He stopped and turned around to see the frisbee coming down. He was perfectly positioned for, for the catch. There was only one problem. Max, Tori, and the astronauts had plenty of work to do for the next few days. They collected moon rocks for science and they set up telescopes to study distant planets and stars. But most of all, they loved gazing upward at the Earth, which seemed to hang in one place in the sky. Soon, the longer shadows told Max that the crew that darkness was coming and it was time to leave. Once everyone was aboard the moonship, Max and Tori waved goodbye to the moon and the crew closed the door. They fired the rocket engines and blasted off the moon. Just 12 days after leaving the Earth, Max, Tori, and the rest of the astronauts were back on the space station. Then a space shuttle took them home. Back on Earth, billions of people watched Max's trip on the news. Everyone talked about it. Some grown ups said the trip wasn't worth the cost. But children understood the excitement of it all. They asked the parents to help send Max to the moon again, but this time to build a big colony where many children could go visit him and learn about the universe. The children were so convincing that all the nations of the world decided to work together to build a big domed colony on the moon. The domes covered homes, offices, and of course, the University of the Moon. They were filled with air so that no one needed a spacesuit inside. Food grew in greenhouses and water was carefully recycled. Outside the domes, astronauts built great telescopes to observe the universe. Students and scientists made important new discoveries almost every day. The building of the moon colony also changed a lot of things back on Earth. Children tried to learn more in school in hopes that they might get to attend the University of the Moon. Grown-ups saved their money for tourist trips to the moon. Most importantly, the beautiful views of Earth from the moon made everyone realize that we all share a small and precious planet. Of course, none of it would have happened without Max. Max was glad that he had been so helpful. He was not the type of dog to stop at that. It's a big universe out there. Where would he go next? the end.